And you ready for the test? Yep. All right. One, two, three, clap. All right. All right. I didn't hear yours at all, so hopefully you'll... they've been singing it pretty well so far. I, I like barely heard yours, so I guess I guess that's good for the uh, you know, the whole whatever the fuck it's called when you can't hear too much outside yeah. noise. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right. So welcome to another episode of Action Tune Bros. Oh what? Yeah, now far less frequently than normal being posted, but it's still being recorded. Don't worry, fans. <laughs> Absolutely. There is no reason for you guys to worry because we're still doing this shit. We're not going to stop yeah. doing this. Yep, I've told I've told all my friends whenever they're concerned about the podcast, I say, hey, don't worry, my podcast never end. <laughs> they just go on hiatus for a little bit and then they come back eventually. Dude, there's no mystery. I was the one that said, that brought that up. Oh no, yeah, I talked to uh, Ed about it recently too, because movie garbage also has been like on a fucking like a year long hiatus. But still. <laughs> oh, oh, so, so Ed, uh, you know, movie garbage. By the way, for all of you who have not actually watched movie garbage or listened to movie garbage, please go listen to that as well. Hell yeah. Um, but Ed's actually been kind of worried about this whole thing as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep him posted saying like whenever like we we hang out occasionally, we'll go to like movies that are just like you know, hang out at the house. But I do say like yeah, we will get back to movie garbage soon someday. <laughs> Don't worry, everybody. I mean this. I mean this not in offense, just in uh, observation. It's kind of funny that you've gotten out of hiatus with the podcast with the guy who lives farther away yeah. than with the guy that you actually <laughs> go and visit physically. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, it's weird because yeah, this is this should be more difficult. But remote recording has its own difficulties, and that's oh why we decided to tackle yeah. that first. <laughs> which, which, fortunately, knock on wood, um, we haven't had too big of issues so far. Again, knock on wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've rec- the videos have been re- turning out perfectly fine. The syncing has been great, so that's always nice. Always good. Ugh. But uh, today is actually a very big day, isn't it? Hell yeah, because we are finally wrapping up another series for the Action Tune Bros. And be sure to stick around at the end to find out what our next series is going to be. Yeah, like seriously, even with all this like long pause waiting, I've kind of been... Not in the like, let's hurry the fuck up, but just I've kind of wanted to see, like get through this. Because I'm scared and curious as to what you want us to watch next. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it'll be a surprise. I'll tell you what the other options were, and maybe that'll make it more or less, you know, impactful, but no, 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 we'll no, get no, there no, when no, we get no, there, because, no. yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you, you build, build up towards the end when you're about to reveal, but of course, in the of meantime, course. Right now, these... we have to wrap up an amazing series, Genda Tartakovsky's Primal, Yeah, and this is another four last now. episodes, <laughs> like, holy oh, yeah. crap, these fi- last five episodes... Yeah, I will say I I I'll, I'm gonna save my opinion for the end of uh, the arc, but yeah, like I my opinion from when I first saw this to the second time I saw this is very different, and I'm very curious to see what you think of the first time you've watched it. So, <laughs> well, yeah, let's not keep these guys waiting, then, shall we? Absolutely, let's get to Primal season two, episode six, Vidar. We open up with Spear and the gang just chilling on a boat as usual. They just recently escaped the um, Viking slave camp. Once again, they're just kind of patching up their wounds with mud, <laughs> like the magic healing mud that they always have. Well, I mean, Very back in the here. day, I guess fertile mud was the closest you could get to like sealing your wound. So yeah, especially as like weirdly primitive as everybody is in this, or primal as they are. Uh, Mira and Spear are kind of just like connecting over her name because he can finally talk to her again and he's just saying Mira and she's like repeating her name to him because that's all he knows how to say (laughs) I mean but this is it's cool because you know just like we've mentioned in the past before uh this series definitely is a a, a, an example of sure they they know words but it takes a lot more than that to actually get communication and so far I mean six episodes into uh season two and they've been doing a pretty damn good job of it yeah, I still like how like subtle it is. It's still uh, regardless of everything. Uh, we see Fang kind of just like has a bunch of arrows in her. She's kind of pulling out bones on her own. And we also see Spear has like a weird new eye scar. <laughs> Don't yep. worry, it doesn't stick around. And I mean, you know, they, they, they get a bit of calm, you know, they just got done with a fight. Everything's cool. And then it gets cut short because our friends, Viking and Sun. 
Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Fang smells something and looks in the air, and then Spear kind of also just like, oh, something's going on, and she gets ready. And then, yeah, once again, I, I, I didn't get a name from him at any point. I just kept re- referring to him as Chief and the Sun, as, even though we know the, learned the Sun's name. I still oh, yeah. refer to him as, like, the Sun for most part. <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, see, it's just like Viking, like Viking Chief or something, but I do remember the Sun, Eldar. Yeah, yeah. They T-bone uh, Spear and Fang's boat, and then they leap on and start, ab- like, just uh, the Viking chief just starts absolutely whooping butt, because he's super fucking tough, and the son, Eldar, is shooting arrows at both um, Fang and Mira. Yep, and then, of course, you know, Mira actually, you know, starts, you know, I, I forget, does she actually use the bow in this fight? No, she first um, blocks the arrows with a shield that she finds on the boat, and Fang starts knocking Eldar off of the like the um, the mast right. that he's standing on. Yeah, Spear continues to fight the chief. He has the sword that he got from the Viking village that he is still like pretty damn good with. Uh, he like they both take swipes at each other. Eventually, they both get disarmed and they start going hand to hand. Yeah, I mean, cool. you know, and the only advantage that a Viking chief has is well, his helmet. Yeah, he has a helmet and he's armored. Uh, Eldar, after getting knocked from the post, is just absolutely getting fucking rocked by Fang. Because <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> yep. And then, of course, uh, a- a- as he gets rocked by Fang, he gets actually tossed overboard. And the yeah. chieftain, actually being a good dad, is like, oh shit, that's my son. Leaps in mm-hmm. after him. Yeah. And now that they are safe, they decide to try to run the boat ashore. Mira takes control of the boat and they tie it up to a tree. All three of them kind of help at the same time. It's a very funny sequence of them like wrapping the rope thing around the tree and trying to stop the boat. Well, um, I, I, see, you you call it funny. I call it interesting because you know, if, um, Spear is like he's not the brightest bulb in no. the, in the box, but when he sees Mira straining, it actually clicks. Oh shit! I should probably help. <laughs> yeah, he actually figures that out for once. Yeah. Uh, as soon as the boat is officially docked. Uh, Fang starts acting a little weird. She kind of just starts panicking. She smells around again. I thought she like, oh, she's smelling something else. But no, actually, she starts kind of like running around in a circle oh. in a panic. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. digging a hole into the ground. I actually, actually, in my notes for this one, I, I wrote down that she starts running and prancing around like a, like a toddler who has to take a pee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then, but, but as Matt said, she starts digging a hole and Spear instantly clicks because he's he, he and Mira are confused about this but then when she's digging a hole it clicks he's just like all of a sudden he just throws his hands up in the air super happy and just hugs Fang yeah there's also a quick flash of him remembering the male uh, T-Rex at the beginning of the series from the second episode <laughs> yep and uh, a big giant smile on his face it's really funny which he I mean, starts helping her build obviously what is a nest Yep, because it sounds it sounds like she's about to give birth. But yep. meanwhile, uh, back with the uh, yep. chieftain and son. We cut to the chief having rescued his son, and he brings him onto land. Uh, we see that Eldar, the son's leg, is bleeding, um, and he starts trying to pat the father's patching up the leg. And as he's doing that, Eldar sees that his father is also badly wounded in the back. Yep the whole the they, whole uh, dichotomy of being a father. Sure, yep. yeah, you can help yourself, but you gotta save your, your children first. Yeah, they start to make camp, and as they sit by the fire, as they stare into it, the chief sees a strange demonic visage uh, showing Fang killing his wife, and, I, and it was like, oh, he wasn't even there for that, how did he see this? And he wakes up realizing it was a dream. Yep, Um. yeah, some weird demonic visage and all that stuff, and then as he wakes up, we see uh, Eldar is actually bringing in a deer because you know yeah. he, he went and out hunted and uh they cook it over the fire and uh he has a quick uh, memory of the family all like hanging out like the brothers kind of playing and fighting his wife there with him and every like back when things were happy and he kind of just like after that memory he kind of chief kind of wanders off into the woods by himself yeah well i mean this the son follows and you know they just have a tender moment where you know tra- just remembering the family that they lost yeah, uh, as the kind of stand by the lake and remembering, they see two massive prehistoric vultures um, flying towards a giant cliff. And of course, the chief like squints, like he has an idea. But yeah, he's got another plan. We cut back to the forest where Fang finally is 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 getting ready and skipping the details because it's actually a little bit more detailed than you know anticipated. But she does lay her eggs. 
I was gonna say, you know, the the long ass close up on her dinosaur cloaca, just having or laying three eggs. It's a very beautiful yep. sequence. What are you talking about? Uh, uh, you After know, all the murder nat- and death, it's nice it's, to see some nice. It's life. a nature document, a documentary that is yeah. animated, extremely detailed, <laughs> a nice opposite uh, 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 gory detail from the bloodiness that usually happens in the right. show. And uh, the as she lays the eggs, we see the yep. clutch in the nest, and but like Spears, like, oh hey, he tries to go near them, and he ref- she refuses to let anybody near the eggs in a very funny sequence. Yeah, right, it's just like Spears, just like yay eggs, and of course, mom being mom is just like, dude, back off. Yeah, no, get away from him. And he's like, she's very protective of them, even from the person she's been traveling with for like I assume now probably years. Right. <laughs> but, um, um, cutting back again to um to um uh, Vi- uh chieftain and son, we actually see both of uh, both of them scaling the mountain up to where the birds are. Yeah, and as they're climbing, we hear them once again say Vidar. Yep, for the first time, Vidar. Which um, I'll explain that after we're done with this episode. Oh but... yeah, we'll get to that later. Yeah, but we see them continue to like track this nest of prehistoric vultures. Uh, and they kind of climb the thing and they find the nest and like they see one of them flies out and starts attacking them. And as the father and son are like, you know, figuring out a plan, the Vidar, or Vidar, uh, Eldar kind of just leaps onto <laughs> one of the vultures just like already just completely. <laughs> it's really funny. He like leaps on it and then we see the f- f- uh, father continue to climb, get into the actual like perch where the babies are and the larger one. And he kind of like rope, uh, ropes it up properly to try to get the like, contain these mm-hmm. monsters. And then, yeah, like af- after a few attempts, Eldar actually does get the rope around the neck and pretty much just choking them to do whatever they want them to do. Yeah, it's very, very funny. Uh, we cut back to Spear bringing food. Um, you see him trying to bring some food to Fang while she's with the eggs and Mira is fixing the boat up. Yeah, it's actually and good that suddenly, she actually knows how to uh, repair boats. Yep, and then suddenly the large vultures being ridden on by the Al Vikings, which I'm pretty sure these the species of these would be Argentavis is like the prehistoric, like the 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 ancestor of vultures is like a super super large bird from the past, so like the, similar to a vulture. So gotcha. Probably what these weird nasty things are. Um, we see them swoop down, and Eldar's immediately picks up Mira off the boat, and the chief is fighting with his like just begins like swipe swooping down and trying to fight them with his spear. Um, as the the gang kind of goes near the eggs to try to protect them from these two guys that, like swooping down, uh, they have a cool ass air battle. Mira actually gets the upper hand on um, the chief's son in a cool fight, and Spear fights the chief on top of the vulture's back, and they're like actually like once again pretty damn evenly matched. It's very very funny. Yeah, and then uh, you know as they're fighting, Mira like actually gets. Hit off the it hit off the uh the vulture. Only she's holding on to a loose part of the rope, like hang it, hanging hanging yeah. on. And she, as she looks down, she sees right below uh, a bit of a distance is where the chief and uh and spear are fighting on the bird. And so in one in one of the more like actiony like dude, this is so cool <laughs> yeah, scenes. Yeah, very fun scenes. Um, we have a very action uh scene. Uh, she lets go falls down and actually lands on top of the other vulture. Oh, she, she didn't fall down. The um, Eldar, the son, was trying to cut the rope with her on it. And he oh, that's right. Does. He was, like, biting it. And this, she, yeah, she yeah, decided yeah. just to let go. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yep. Uh, they managed to both land on there, and they begin to fight. Eventually, Spear tosses the chief from his bird. He literally just, like, tosses him off of it. And this is a super long sequence of the chief just like hitting tree after tree and branch after branch and just like slapping all these things to eventually finally hit the ground after having his like, you know, fall softened a little bit. But he completely smashes into the ground. Very, very hard. But you see that he has just barely lives. Right. And And then then, and then back on the two vultures. Do you want to see what happens next? Yeah, you you, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say back on top of the two vultures. We see that Spear kind of leaps off of the one that him and Mira are on, and then he just straight up drop kicks the son <laughs> right off. And unlike the father who had a bunch of branches and twigs and trees to stop his to soften his fall, uh, Eldar just lands straight up, smashes onto a rock as he falls. Oh yeah, just immediately like hard. You like the the sound that it makes is so like I mean it goes without saying with this show, but it is so visceral because it is a distant sound. But it still sounds 
hard and heavy and yeah. loud. Oh yeah. Like ooh. Then, uh, yeah, it's like a, you see like a long hard ass, hard ass like long splat far far away. And you see the chief start to swim towards him. Yeah, in you like see, a panic. Yep. We see Fang sees the two vulture birds approaching and it is revealed to be Spear and Mira and that is where the episode ends. Yep, that is where the uh the first uh, the first of many for this one uh ends. Oh yeah. And uh yeah, um after the uh after the filler incident points at Charles Darwin and there you have it. <laughs> um after yeah. that whole thing, um seeing go, go like going back straight to like, you know, the the fucking formula was refreshing and they uh, Gendy did not like as he always does he does not pull any punches with this i know it was a fun super great like uh i love how how action it was like compared to the last couple episodes who had it like fights and this was like you have like just an action movie of like fun set piece the boat fight the like vulture fight the like the, the, the fun leaping from vulture. it was like so many fun different sequences and then also the nice little like soft scene of um fang having her kids finally and finally having yeah. that pay off this the earlier season thing was very cute uh, we but, also got um, like a little bit of time with the antagonist. It was really, it was like a all around like felt like it could have been like a fucking two hour long movie. It was so much like fun stuff in that episode. Like to be to be honest, I mean it it's it's the whole thing where you know you're not rooting for the Vikings because of you know what they did with uh, Mira. However, yeah. there it, it just it, it's Gendy reminding you, hey, they're people too. You know, they got their yeah, own yeah, way exactly. of doing things. They, they got their own way of doing things. They've got their own, but um. Fact remains, it, it it they're not good. Uh, they're not good, at least for this story. Um, yeah, I was also gonna say um, between between everybody in this series so far that's had like a shitty shitty stuff happen to them, and like now we're seeing them kind of like get back on their feet. Who do you think proportionally has suffered the most so far in the series? Do you think <laughs> um, between everybody at this point? You said at this very point because things okay. are gonna change, of course, from this moment. But still. <laughs> Okay. Well, since it has to be at this point, um, I have I have to say that it's definitely Spear because I mean he definitely already lost an entire family at like at one time, and then of course he's going through, and uh, there have been times where he almost lost the rest of his family, aka Fang. and uh, no. you know, with the end of season one when uh, Mira actually getting kidnapped by the uh the the, the scorpions a second it's, time <laughs> yeah a second time it's just like damn dude this man's been on an emotional roller coaster and he's had to truck on through holy mm -hmm. shit however however when it comes to uh when it comes to people maybe not necessarily losing a family i feel like the one that has the most potential is going to be Mira because all we mm. know is that is she got captured and is enslaved. We don't know her backstory, like her actual backstory yet. We just know she's a slave who can actually. Yeah. Talk. I was going to say, I feel bad for Fang a lot too, though, because she was a mother who lost all of her kids and then she found happiness and the father to a new family and then lost him as well. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it was kind of her fault. She did that one. Like the the T Rex has killed her her babies when they were young. But the T Rex she was trying to defend another friend that she's made since the the, the person who helped her defend her original family. And she accidentally ended up killing him. And that's another fucking like everyone's it's, it, like yeah, it's just so fucked up. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> sad in this. And now <laughs> and now the village the, the Viking chieftain he, he literally to this weird Neanderthal with a T Rex. And a bald lady um, yeah. lost lost former, his slave, wife <laughs> and both of his kids and his entire village and his entire <laughs> village. Yeah, like dude, there there is no happiness in here, dude. Wow, you know what? For a moment, for a moment, I thought we were actually watching Berserk because there's no happiness. <laughs> yeah, there's no happiness here. Uh. Um, now one of the one of the things about this, um, the title the title card, you know, Vidar. Which, yeah. you know, they say that once. Um, for those of you who don't know, because now it's time for my... It's, now it's time for me to shine. Um, <laughs> v, uh, Vidar is not 
necessarily an Icelandic or like Viking word. It's actually the name of a Norse god, the Norse oh, god yeah. of vengeance specifically. So you know, Hell yeah. them them going to fight uh, this Neanderthal and Mira and a giant T Rex using the guy uh, under the god of vengeance's name. Yeah, that's not that's not gonna play out at all. <laughs> yeah, that will, who knows? That won't come up again. Actually, I was gonna say they said Vidar. I think in the um, in episode four when they killed the village of Vikings, I think with, I think at some point he did say Vidar to his son. At I think I, I think that around. was like the last words that were spoken. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, but for those of you who don't, yeah, for those of you who don't know, and if in case I didn't say it in that episode, yeah, that uh, they are they are literally like chanting the name of the god of vengeance. Oh yeah. Very, very fun. A very fun episode that should bring back the series of the main plot. Uh, like a great comeback. Oh, thankfully. Um, but, yeah. And now we're going to get to <laughs> one of your most favorite arcs ever. Yeah, yeah With of one course. of your most favorite villains ever. <laughs> because of course, of you course. have a type, sir. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very predictable. <laughs> um, but I was going to say, okay, yeah, ready for the next part. This is, yeah, this is going to be an actual arc. I think it's the first actual, like, also going to say... This season is continuing the actual like ongoing plot um, compared to the last for the first season as well, but uh, all right. So yeah, let's get back to the series with episode seven, the, the Colosseus, part one. <laughs> well, yeah, I was gonna say the first episode. Did they refer to it as part one or just the Colosseus? Um, it is the Colos. It is the Colosseus. Just that, but it's a three. It- it's a part. Oh yeah, yeah, I it's know. a partner. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I added that like gentle part one. Yeah, uh, we open up on the Viking chief clinging to life, very bloody, on the rock where his son was killed, it's completely like giving up on everything. As we see visions of Valkyries coming down for him. Yep. They kind of and as the yeah, Valkyries actually see, like, go weird, down, angelic. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, to I, take his warrior spirit back, but uh, right before they can reach him, they stop, and a large number of demonic f- hands grab him and drag him down into. I wrote. Um, I, I assume this is hell. H e l. No, uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. C c c. This is see, this is where it gets fucking weird because H e l hell. Uh, for those of you who don't know, hell is uh, hell is the guardian of like all the uh like the cowards that die, the people who don't get to go no. to Valhalla. But uh, her domain, Helheim, is icy and cold. Yeah, absolutely. Um, however, here it goes to this lava area. So my first thing, my first thought was, wait, are we in Muspelheim? Yeah, I was going to say Muspelheim was where I would have assumed. But we'll, we'll see. I, well, I'll, we'll get to it in a second. I was going to ask a question, but we don't know yet. Um, we see he is dragged down by these very demon- demoniac-looking figures. As he is approached this lava like weird underground underworld area. And in the uh, lava, sees... you know, there's like a bunch of souls just going through the lava. Yeah, uh, not yet. I was going to say, because he see, sees a large staircase uh, going up to some very Nordic looking portal, and he begins to slowly ascend into it. Uh, at the top of that, we see a huge demoniac looking figure uh, awaiting him. And he looks down, and that's when we see like the river of souls, and we see his son is in this lava-like river. Yep, and uh, it's also not just any like demonic-looking thing; it's the same one that he saw in the fire when he had that dream. Yeah, and um, you know, as it's safe to assume, <laughs> yeah, it, it, that it's this... safe to assume there's uh, there's some kind of connection, but as... but I was gonna say safe to assume that this is Vidar. Um. I, we'll get th- we'll get there at the end of this episode because it, yeah. it's it's weird. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, he holds we- out a palm to the chief, and it's like a weird, bloody little, like weird looking palm thing. Um, he approaches him, and then we see he has like a f- ball of fire in his palm, and the chief accepts and is engulfed in flame. Well, now hold on. Before he accepts, we see like in in that flame, we see like spear and fang. Like yeah. fighting and stuff, fueling his rage, and of course, then he accepts, and then he gets engulfed in flames and becomes some form of fire giant. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we cut to Spear kind of watching a weird little Pokemon battle between <laughs> between a bird and a turtle on the shore, <laughs> and the turtle's like, "No, stop it!" Well, it's it's kind of funny because it's kind of like a battle, but it's just like 
the bird is inquisitively tapping the shell like is this okay and the turtle's like no stop <laughs> yeah um, it's, very, it's very cute and he's kind of like staring at them bored and then of course we uh, get we mira see. still like working on the boat yeah, she's kind of pretty much finishing it up, like hoisting the sails and everything. She's pretty much ready to go. Um, she sees that she goes to Fang and she sees that she's kind of just sitting there watching the eggs, not doing anything. Um, Mira begins to gather tons and tons of food and supplies and begins to put it onto the boat as Spear decides to help her do that. Yep. And uh, uh, not only that, but we also see that, you know, Spear's like, hey, Fang, here's a steak for you. And Fang's like, yep. ooh, I like steak. And then Mira starts trying to take the eggs. And obviously... Oh, you have the mixed up. It was Mira that offered the steak, and then uh, Spear kind of tries to snatch the well, eggs. <laughs> either way, it's like they're trying to take the eggs, I, like trying to coax doing something. Yeah. And it's just hilarity ensues with like Fang getting annoyed because, you know, new proud mother. Yeah, like uh, Spear grabs two of the eggs and then she kind of like she catches them and she like sho shoves his back, back back to put the eggs back. But as he's doing that, Mira's already running to the boat with one of the eggs, and it's very funny. And then <laughs> finally, after scene. after so much hilarity ensuing, we actually see Mira like looking, at, like in in the boat because there's like a little makeshift nest with an egg in it, yeah. and she's like looking at Fang like, "Hey, look, it's a nest." You could use this. And mm. in sheer reluctance, Fang just picks up her other eggs and goes onto the boat. Yeah, finally, they kind of, she kind of relents and says, okay, let's get some moving. Um, they get onto the boat, set sail down the river, and eventually hit the larger ocean. Yep. Fang, uh, like at night, we see again a beautiful night shot of the ocean. Uh, Fang wakes up at late night, kind of scratching, kind of just like a little post scratch and looks around. And she sees a massive boat in the distance, kind of ignores it and goes back to sleep. <laughs> ah, but then, of course, morning in happens. Morning. And, of course, Spear wakes up, uh, goes to catch some fish in a net. And then um, uh, before he even gets to eat one, uh, he's like, he just squints in the fog, like upset, like, hmm. All of a sudden, we see three smaller ships coming towards them. And yep. these are different kinds of boats because unlike the long boats, these ones have grapple hooks. Yeah, and I was gonna say some. We see the guards inside, and they look very Egyptian-looking guards. Very Egyptian-looking, yeah. Yeah, we see that they hook the small boat that our group is on, and we see a bunch of Kopesh well-wielding guards in their like weird, uh, vaguely Egyptian-looking headdresses come on to the boat, and of course they are easily all killed by Spear with like little effort. <laughs> right. He's spear. And of course, uh, before this fight ensues, Fang looks around like, um, 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 gently puts eggs in mouth and hides them. Yeah. We see another massive boat hook their ship, and a huge warrior comes off of the boat, and ah. this is Kamau. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Oh, Kamau. he does have a name, does he? Yep, 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 he does. Okay. Uh, we never learned it in the show. You have to learn it from, like, online research, of course, because but they never referred to him as anything. Um, we see that he easily beats Spear. Spear is unable to do literally now, any damage to him whatsoever. Now, to, to, the, to you guys listening in, Kamau is really tall, really muscular. He actually kind of looks like in the Charles Darwin episode, he kind of looks like the Madman almost, only taller and bigger. Yeah, only way like bigger built. And we see Mira shoots him with arrows and they do not affect his skin. Like, yeah, like, like they go in. Friend. Oh, they stick all right. And even yeah, there's yeah. like one where she shoots him like close to the throat and he still pulls it out like it's fucking nothing. Like it didn't even hit yeah. the windpipe. Yep, he actually is beating the crap out of them. Uh, he beats Spear very easily, and then he actually goes toe to toe with Fang. Um, he like she tries to you know swat him, but then he kind of just smacks her in the face, and we see all the baby eggs get knocked out of her mouth. Two of them land safely and back inside the nest, but one breaks and smashes on the side of the boat. Yep, and we and when it smashes, you actually see part of the baby embryo. So it's like, yep, that guy. Yeah. Yep, that's dead. Yeah, 100%. Uh, the whole team is incredibly pissed at this point, and they all start actually beating Kamau back a little bit. Um, just as they are actually getting a little slight, slight possible upper hand on him, we see the queen of this boat appear, and she has the eggs in her grasp. This is Queen Ema, we learn from online. Ema? Yep. 
The gang is then captured and taken on to the supermassive Colosseus. I'm assuming that this boat is the Colosseus. I mean, it it would stand for reason. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, the boat is like a, inside. It's like a massive building with tons of pillars and stuff inside of it. Um, we see that the group is then separated as Spear and Fang are put into iron cages in the like bottom of the boat. And then we see that Kamau the warrior is also being held uh, in one hey of these Matt, prisons beneath the boat. Yeah. There's a, there's a term for, you know, the bottom of the boat where prisoners are put. Where? The brig. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Well, I don't even know. It's like, it doesn't even seem like a brig because this boat is so guided. It's like this boat is uh, like a building. I mean, in, <laughs> in Matt's even... defense, uh, we say Colosseus, you know, supposed to be derived from Colossus, which means very, oh. very fucking big. And uh, yeah, yeah it, 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 they're not kidding. But anyway, uh, as we'll get into later on. But we also, as uh, you know, Spear is kind of looking angrily at Kamua. Um, we see Mira is actually in shackles and gets put into another room with a bunch of other women. Yeah, a bunch of other beautiful women, either thralls or slaves, like before. The boat sets off, and we see it kind of like sailing through the ocean. We get a nice little some dolphins and gulls for scale, <laughs> just to see how big the Colosseus is. It's very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, Fang is obviously incredibly upset in her cell, um, and she won't stop staring at Kamau. Uh, she won't even sleep. She won't even like let herself like sleep because she keeps like staring at him so pissed offedly. Uh, but eventually, she does pass out. When she awakes. Um, she sees some guards outside of her cage and she immediately starts killing them. And when they, we see like Spear also kind of helps. He grabs a guard, beats him up, and is just like, they're ready to, you know, escape again. But once again, Queen Ima appears and she threatens to smash the eggs because we see she has one in her hand and she kind of lifts it up in the air like she's going to smash it. And, and with so the way, Spear and, she, and she also stop. notices like the way Spear like communicates with Fang. So like she yeah. also like uses that to her advantage. So that, you know, Spear reluctantly is just like, hey, hey, you gotta calm down, you gotta calm down. Yeah, but also, um, while this exchange is happening, we do see that while they're, like, trying to escape and everything, Kamau just completely, like, stares at them completely unmoving, like, he's, you know, just completely unamused or has tried this in the past, he knows there's no... Right, no, he looks no, very complacent in where he's at right now. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, I, th I think, uh, yeah, as, uh, as this happens, um, we see, like, we a whole see bunch Mira of... look out the window, and she sees that they are approaching some new land. Right. Like, you know, smaller boats being rowed by more slaves and, uh, you know, and, uh, they, like, door, like, we're talking, like, the doors to these smaller ones open and it's kind of getting, uh, it's kind of getting, like, D-Day where, like, you know, the boats open and they just run out. And, yeah, uh, all, those, all the low-level guards are, like, running outside of the boat uh, and then eventually Spear and Fang and Kamau are tasked with fighting. Uh, we see them, like, arrive and it's just really, really fucking cool. Uh, they, they, from their angle, we actually see the actual warriors they're fighting, and they seems to be Babylonian. Very, are, yeah, very Babylonian looking. Yeah. Uh, they see that they are riding elephants, which is another, like, what the fuck is going on. Um, Spear and Fang join, and of course, they're just completely, like, mowing down all these, like, low-level Babylonian scrubs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, uh, like, it's funny because the, uh, the Egyptian soldiers, like, put up the ladders to climb the walls, and they're obviously getting, uh, like, thrown down. Spear says, I don't need no ladder, starts literally climbing the wall. Um, Fang <laughs> yeah. notices that the Egyptians are using a battering ram a battering ram on the main gate, and she actually helps out because, you know, T-Rex strength. Yeah, it's very funny. She just grabs the back of it and just shoves it through in one go. We also see them take down an elephant uh, much easier than the, the uh, mammoth fight that they had back in the past. With oh, yeah. The man with the mammoth oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, also, we get to see... Uh, uh, like a after the uh, spear breaks, we see Spear using a new weapon. He's using two of the sickles. Yeah, the weird like kopesh looking things that they have. Uh, and like as they take this kingdom, we see that they're in a huge war, and that is where the episode ends. Yep. Holy crap! So, um, let me give you some thought, uh, like some of my thoughts at about the very beginning of this episode. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. It's very difficult to pinpoint exactly what's going on here. Because at first, um, you know, I thought he got dragged down to Muspelheim and the big, giant, fiery, horned uh, creature was supposed to be Sutur. 
you know. Yeah, the, that's why I would have the lord, the lord of the lord of um uh, the lord of who's fire behind. demon, fire giants or demon. Yeah, but but in every single solitary like wiki or looking up. They refer to that giant creature either as the fire demon or the fire giant. Which I'm like, yeah. okay, so what the hell are you telling me? Are you Vidar? Are you Sutur? Are you just a regular ass fire giant that can just make? I was gonna say, like, according to um, like a lot of Norse like depictions and stuff, um, Vidar does like appear some most of the time to be either depicted with horns or like with fire and stuff. So I don't know if like I don't know much about Norse mythology. I don't know if he works out of like fucking Muspelheim or. Just notorious for it, but like I've seen like a lot of depictions of Vidar like in association with fire or with horns in like art and stuff, so I don't know. Right. <laughs> so it's just like it, it's like there's there's no set source saying, Hey, this is what he is. And I'm just sitting here like, Come on, Gendy. Well, you know, magic and weirdness, it's it's all very, you know, vague. But also like just even thinking about um Timeline wise, this whole episode is very fucking confusing because <laughs> Vikings are very fucking like Scandinavian thirteenth uh, century. Yep. Yeah, like like yeah, very thirteenth century ish. And then um the like whatever Egyptian time period this could be because yeah, ancient Egypt is fucking like yeah, Egypt, incomprehensibly Egypt, old. Egypt was bef- ancient Egypt, especially with what we're seeing, was definitely before Viking era. But no, I was gonna say, yeah, because like like the uh the the one of the, like fun history tidbits I always like to do is just like uh Cleopatra, the most like famous Egyptian queen oh, absolutely. is closer to our period right now than she was during her period to when the uh pyramids were built. Crazy like, to that's think how about. In, Yeah, that's in, that's insane that like she's closer to like the PS five and stuff than she was to when the pyramids were created. It's just like it's like incomprehensible how old and like when we watch the show Rome and they like see all the weird animal headed Egyptian gods. They're like, what's with this weird stuff? And another person's like, hey, these gods are like way older than ours or the Greeks. <laughs> so don't even like talk shit about that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude, dude, but, dude, like, these guys are old, like really old. Don't disrespect. Yeah, it's just like it's incomprehensible how old. So like that makes sense. And then Babylon, of course, is like also uh, either concurrent or pre-Greek times, you know, like mythology wise and stuff so it's also like yeah that that could be like you know the weird um well like i said like the sumerian age like uh conan and stuff where like it's a, it's some weird time where like in the past pre what we know and it was like a weird you know mixed time of like monsters and all kinds of stuff so like but still like the viking is like still the most modern thing we've seen like besides chaos theory or the uh primal theory or whatever yeah 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 so it's so weird, but yeah, I did like. But also, I like. I looked at the uh, the Colosseus, the ship, is also like could be reference to actual ships that were either built or attempted to have been built during the time during like the past and during like the Greek era and stuff like that. Uh huh. So it's not like completely. It's not completely incomprehensible to have like a ship so big during this time period that like there were pillars and shit inside of it that like seemed impossible. <laughs> yeah. Um. Which uh. You know what? You already beat me to it. Yeah. Um, because I was gonna be like, "Hey, Matt, what is a Colosseus?" But you already, yeah, you I'm already did that. that it's, yeah, yeah, it's like the it's like a Greek or Roman like um, like a like a it was like a thing drawn to have been possibly existed or like a theoretical thing. It was like a super big. It just it, it literally just means like Colossus, of course, but it's just like the like the ancient Greek pronunciation or whatever of it. Um, and then also I wanted to mention, uh, again to Tartakovsky, of course, this isn't the first time we've seen a Viking turn into a giant fire monster. Do you remember the Samurai Jack episode oh, Jack absolutely. and the Lava Monster? Absolutely, because, you know, he, uh, the Lava Monster was like, I want to fight, I want to fight. And then you find out that he was, well, a Viking who has been stuck, trapped, trying to, like, find a worthy opponent so that he can die and go to Valhalla. And guess what? He does. Yeah, it's kind of the reverse story of uh, <laughs> the chief, unfortunately. Yeah, where the chief in this one is just like, I made a deal with the devil. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, very fun episode. I like, but yeah, seeing more weird cultures, more in a, uh, entirely anachronistic <laughs> fucking time period wise. But I did look up, like, yeah, look, um, there were fights between the ancient, ancient Egyptians and the Babylonians. So this weird thing with the queen is not, uh, once again, not entirely impossible. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, however, I don't think we need to keep these guys waiting because there's more to come with this. 
Oh yeah, we're not done with the with the ship yet because we have more adventures in episode seven, the, the Colosseus, part two, part two. <laughs> oh, see, oh, oh, see, you wanted to make it all epic and stuff. I mean, I was just like you're gonna make it like an aside. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, if you remember from the last forest. time. Oh, yep. Yeah, I'll let you cover the beginning since it's one of your... Oh, your, it's yeah, your, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so for, first off, we get, like, a forested area where, from the ground, we see fire and this big, like, fiery-looking giant of... It's the Viking Chieftain. The Viking Chieftain actually comes out, and he looks around, like, he looks around, and uh, in one direction, he just, like, glares, and he starts walking nothing being able to quench it like quench his uh his flame like all the all like the you know the rocks start melting a little bit the forest around him starts burning up and even when he walks on like a river or anything it just sizzles and he just keeps going and he is hell bent on going straight somewhere yeah Where could we also that see be? he makes we a gigantic know. fire long axe yeah but meanwhile, he's a giant fire long axe and smashes the ground. It's like a mix of giant wave and it's like, oh shit, this guy is fucking like <laughs> oh, anime powers or some shit. <laughs> absolutely, he got the he got the power trip of a century. But meanwhile, yeah, yeah. back in Babylon, yeah, we see crows picking at the victims of the Babylonian war who fought. Spear is kind of plucking arrows out of his back. We see he's pretty wounded, and we see Kamau kind of just like wiping the arrows out of himself. Just like a, like a really fun, <laughs> just like wipe wipe, just like nonchalantly. Uh, we see Ima, the queen, pulling up in a carriage, and she has a small kid with her that looks at Kamau, and they look back at each other very sadly. We see the queen go to a chest full of gold, kind of just nonchalantly play, plays with it, not really giving a shit, and continues to walk on as she sees the Babylonian king with a leopard cub. Is that a leopard, or is that like an like, ocelot? Uh, well, we see it gets bigger later, so I'm assuming it's pretty big. It's, it's pretty big, so it seems like either some kind of, like, leopard. Yeah, okay, okay. But, yeah. Yeah, spoiler for later in this episode, I think, or is that next episode? I don't know. Yeah. But we actually, no, yeah, that's later in this episode. We see it's getting way bigger. Um, yeah, she sees the cub. She sees the Babylonian king has it. He kind of, like, hands it over to her, and she's kind of, like, playing with it. Turns around and tells the guards, kill the guy. Uh, they, they kill the king and she sees uh, the little girl. She lets her run off to Kamau as we see that this is his daughter. Yes. What's this? We actually have a reason why he's doing things. And yeah, it's nice. cool motive for this giant awesome dude. Yeah. And this gi- and we're talking like this man is massive and his daughter is like he could literally fit her in the palm of her uh, of his hand. That's how small she yeah. is. Well, no, sorry. That's not how small she is. That's how large this man is. And, you know, he's like, he gets to <laughs> hug her and, you know, looks at her very sad-like. But then, you know, um, visitation hours are over. So, you know, you, you had five minutes. Yeah, we also minutes. see that Ima has the eggs with her, that uh, Fang clocks that she has the eggs with her yep. as well. Yep. Yeah, but yeah, the kid's time is over, and she has to go back to the queen. And then, of course, and when then... they when they walk in, speaking of how big the Colosseus is, the, as they as a uh, uh, Kamo and uh, Spear and Fang walk in, they get to go into a giant like hot spring kind of thing. That's still. I was gonna say well before that, before the, right before that, after we see the queen. Um, after we see the king go back to the queen, we smash cut to a Chinese armored looking general screaming as Spear and Fang and Kamau are just killing soldiers that I have looked up on. It seems this might be the Qing dynasty, which is another super ancient Chinese right. like, dynasty. But they're just completely like slaying warriors left and right, smashing up, smash, smash. And then we cut to... Now, this is when we cut to the bathing time. We see them with like a gigantic pool area. Yeah, which, which by the way, to. a huge massive pool and guess what it's on the boat <laughs> yeah the colosseus is very very cool yeah and of course <laughs> like you know cruise ship we just and, and it kind of it kind of loops honestly because you know we got done with the Qing dynasty or whichever dynasty you said forgive me i was gonna say smash cut to a slavic general screaming and <laughs> as, a, as armored general as spear and fang once again are killing early Russian army people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and like then of course after them. after they after they fight, they uh they, they they go and they you know go into the uh bath 
And then you get to fight, you get to see them fight some Greco Roman uh, types. Yep, smash cut to Greco Roman army. Uh, Spear and Fan continue to kill the soldiers with a huge amount of ease. And then we just cut to this time the pool, the third time we see the pool, and it is just completely red with the amount of blood that these. Oh, yeah, it is just, (laughs) it is, it is crimson now. Um, Yeah. And then, of course, we finally get to go to a particular fight. Which is, I guess, with uh, what would you call them? Philistines? I was going to say, this time the the boat, the, the Colosseus itself, is attacked first. Oh, right. You see some cannons blow open the, uh, blow open the, uh, um, the boat, like the uh, bathhouse area. And we see that they're actually at sea. And then smash cut to, these are Philistines. They, they, are, Philis- they are Philistines, okay. Yeah. Um, Which I had to Google what the fuck that even was. <laughs> but you, the, well, oh, sorry, sorry. It, you say Philistine, but um, if you go with the uh, the old ways, especially if you go to church, Philistines, because that's yeah. Goliath. Yeah, the Philistines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just like, right, I did not recognize these people at fucking all, and I'd look it up. Right? It's um, like, huh? But yeah, we, they get... Yeah, we actually see they're actually putting up a little bit of a fight, and they have ladders and stuff connecting to the boat. Yep, and then, of course, you know, Fang, Spear, K- Kamau... You know, they all legitimately, like, start easily handling them. While the Egyptians pretty much have, like, cannonballs being shot from their ballistas as well. Yeah, it's a really cool fight because they're actually having a... They're actually putting up a fight this time. But once again, they see Kamau and they're just like, okay, fuck it. And they completely surrender. (laughs) Yep. And then, of course, one night, um, Spear is woken up uh, while he's in his... uh, While in his cell... Because at, during the night, he hears music. Yeah. I was going to say, um, let's see, the warrior. Yeah, we see the throne room, actually. And we see, uh, before that, we see, like, after the fight, the throne room, we see the ki- the king is before Queen Ema. And we see that the leopard is now fully grown. And this is how, you know, like, a lot of time has passed in the actual, like, boat trip and the adventure that they've been having. Like, uh, obviously, like, years are possibly have passed by now. Yes, indeed. Um, we see Ima is brought before, or sorry, Mira is finally back in the show. She is brought before Ima. Uh, and she's kind of just like standing around awkwardly, not knowing what to do. And then we see Ima approach, look at her face, and then she starts doing this really long, crazy, elaborate dance uh, as her people continue to play. Uh, as she's doing the dance, we see her just suddenly kick the Philistine king to his death uh, off the top of her boat. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the band continues to play. Yep. And then, and uh, see, you know, yeah. she looks looks at Mira again, and then Mira's just like, "Oh, oh, I got it, I got it now." And then she starts actually, yeah. you know, upset, but she does actually dance. Yeah. Uh, this is, as she's dancing, we see the Colosseus approach a peaceful, I'm guessing, I'm assuming Indian village. Yeah, I would say, I, I think this is most certainly uh, Indian, like India. Yeah, yeah, India. Uh, the, we see the villagers offer them food and try to be peaceful. Uh, Ima herself goes ashore this time, looks at the food, looks at their offering, goes back towards the boat, and then, like she did with the king, gestures for them to kill the villagers anyway. And, of course, Kam- uh, Kamau is definitely hesitant this time to actually yeah. do anything. He kind of bring, Yeah, he looks at them, he brings her the food himself, saying, like, hey, they're offering us this, isn't this good enough? And we see her grab his daughter by her hair and hold her up into the air, and he kind of just, like, freaks out. And like, okay, okay, he doesn't want her to suffer. So we see him go back to the Indian person and we see him just completely smash and destroy the chief. And he starts killing, of course, as normal. And then, of course, uh, Spear, uh, like, watching watching this is like, he has his, like, I am sad, I am sad. But then he just, like, goes back into the ship, like, just... No, I was gonna say Fang is the one who actually roars in disapproval and then just goes back into the but ship. No, but but um, as Kamau. but Spear does have like his his sad face, his usual like I'm sad that this is yeah, happening yeah. thing. Yeah, and, Fang, and Fang, Fang is just like, first. dude, fuck this guy, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kamau keeps smashing and smashing. Um, this time back in the cells, Spear watches Kamau. And he kind of like looking around as they're getting their food. It's a very funny scene of the guard like giving Kamau his food, giving Spear his food, and then like it's like terrifiedly get, like throwing Fang a bunch of food because she's like roars at him. Right. Uh, Spear does manage to trick the guard, knock him unconscious, and grab his keys. As he frees himself, he tries to free Kamau, but Kamau will not leave. Yep, the do- doors open, but Kamau just is like, "Nope, I'm staying here. You shouldn't do this." Yep. 
We see Spear go up many, many floors, including the deck where the workers are, the deck where the guards are. We see him go through a bunch of different floors, like also the rowers and everything like that. Um, and he, we, he hears music playing. This is when he, he hears the music playing from the throne room. Yeah, th- th- this is when he actually like sees and what's going on and everything. And, you know, he, the, the, the queen is sitting there with the eggs and the giant leopard and the, you know, the girls are dancing. But all of a sudden, one of them screams. Because they notice him because he is bad at stealth. <laughs> yeah, he's just creepily hiding there with his eyes, like looking up the looking up the thing. <laughs> and then of course, you know, a battle ensues uh with the uh, soldiers and um and spear. And as all of this yeah, is happening, actually, uh Mira he, He's actually killing the guards pretty equally evenly as ev- as usual. <laughs> yeah, and as all of this is happening, you know, the queen joins the fight to, you know, actually fight up against Spear, and she is just her agility is mu- is much more like potent than Spears just mindlessly flailing. Yeah. But as- I was gonna say, yeah, she seems like pretty evenly matched with Spear because like they like they're both like not oh. hurting each other that much, but they both seem like pretty evenly oh, matched. See, honest, like, honestly, honestly, I was gonna say that she was actually be- uh, like one upping Spear mm. because because yeah, sure, they're not doing much damage to each other, but she has landed the most hit. In fact, like. 80% of all the hits that are being landed are because of her. Yeah, she's actually really fucking tough, which I love that. That's really cool. Uh, but as they are fighting, Mira does manage to save the kid and the eggs as she flees the the, um, the throne room. Uh, Spear starts killing his way back through the entire boat. Um, he like, you know, like the guards trying to try to go up the stairs and he see like the head roll down because fucking he's going ham, he's whooping their butts. Uh, he's killing his way through, and just as he's doing that, uh, we see Fang's eggs actually start to hatch. Yep, because, you know, running around with two big eggs wasn't bad enough. Now you have two infant uh, infant children, a.k.a. little T-Rexes. T-Rex babies. <laughs> yeah, and also, like I said, judging by the leopard, it's been at least maybe a year, or if not more. So these eggs are taking fucking forever to hatch. <laughs> well, I mean, but they haven't the been properly hatch, incubated this entire time, so... Yeah, that's true. They fortunately they survived, though. Yeah, know. seriously. Um, yep, yeah, the eggs hatch, and of course, their little tiny T-Rex roars activate Fang, and she just bursts out of the cage with no difficulty at yep. all and runs Mama down. Instincts kicked in, and there's even more fighting going on. But, yeah. unfortunately... It all like as all of this is happening, uh, Kamau actually is just like you know what I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna actually like maybe go upstairs and see what's going on, and the moment he yeah. does, he notices that um, Mira, Spear, the two babies, uh, sorry, the two babies and Fang are completely surrounded. Spear and Mira are extremely tired, and. Uh, and uh, queen, the queen has not only um, Kamu, uh, Kamau's daughter, but now has two dinosaur chicks. Yep, she has all the cards once again. <laughs> she is just that ridiculous. Um, and that is where the episode yep, ends. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, wow, that was a I, that was a really fun one. Like I was saying, how much time do you think has passed, judging by like the context clues, Honestly, but also just like the the show in general? Like, what the and it's like. Uh, I guess, you know, culture-wise, it's impossible to fucking even try to predict what the fuck is happening. Well, but. honestly, I would say probably about a year tops. Because, like you said, yeah. the continuity can get a little bit weird. And, um, I don't know, I feel like leopards grow pretty quickly. So that thing has to be, at, like, at most one year old. Yeah, I was gonna say, um... I would assume as much, but it's just like the, I would assume that they age the same as dogs, and like that, that in that thing, I would assume because like yeah, it's impossible. But I was gonna say, regardless of the actual time period, um, what did you, what would you think of the different human empires we saw? Which one do you think was your favorite of like the ten seconds that they had of on the <laughs> of the ten seconds that we had? Uh, I think the 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 uh, the Asian, like the uh, the Chinese warlord one. Yeah. They just honestly, uh, feudal uh, feudal Asia. Th- they, I don't know what it is about them, but I think I like the, what I like the most is like how their buildings and how their like armors and weapon armor and weapons look for the time period. Mm. 
But at the same time, I I'm mean, listening. you know, it was it was interesting just seeing all of them in general. Yeah, I was gonna say like the between all the weird things we've saw, like yeah, the early Slavic one could be like fifth century, but then the Qing Dynasty is like very specifically like early sixteenth century, and then like I said, the Vikings were only around for like exclusively like the fucking fourteen hundreds. It's just <laughs> it's like right, yeah. it's so ridiculous. It's <laughs> insane. But uh, but yeah, it, it's it was so fun to see all those different groups and like see how like uh, despite all of that, like none of their strength was anything compared to a fucking T Rex and a weird gigantic warrior. <laughs> it was just like I mean, yeah, it was so funny. But then of course, it's finally time to go to the next episode because guess what? Really, I was gonna say <laughs> because I was gonna say yeah, well, uh, about the the cute little babies we saw the uh, the cute little T Rex babies. Uh, what's the youngest pet you've ever had? Youngest pet I've ever had? Yeah. Oh, um, now I guess it doesn't really count because they were uh, feral babies. But um, mm. because living in country houses, you tend to get strays sometimes. And um, of course, I see them all the time at work. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I mean, true because of your line of work. But um, yeah. we did have a mama cat who was getting ready to give birth, and she did give birth. And so the youngest I would say is just kittens. Mm, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say like I've had uh, hermit crabs and like snails from egg. Um, I would say probably bear my a uh, dog my like child retriever mix. He was one month when we adopted him, and he was like, pretty big then, and now he's fucking huge. But yeah, like he is. it's yeah, I, that's probably the youngest pet I've ever had, and I love yeah, cute little animal pets. I think we had some birds maybe when growing up, and like they were super small. Like, but yeah, like I think from egg, I think I've hermit crabs and snails are probably the only like the smallest thing I've ever had from like birth birth. But yeah, it's like it's it's so fun just kissing those cute little dinosaurs. I love it. We also didn't describe them. Uh, one it has like a lot of blue and red stripes, mostly red stripes on the face, and then one has a little horn like the father did. Um, coloring wise, they are mostly the like aqua bluish color that Fang is, which or like the greenish color that Fang is. With hints of really, red. I love their their design is very cute. They also reminded me of. Um, did you get to? I, I'm assuming you watched Land Before Time when you were growing oh, up. Hell yeah, dude. Like every kid in the 90s? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> the second movie with Chomper, the best one yeah, 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 of the yeah, series. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I fucking, yeah, the Chomper was the best character in that entire series. You know, they went like 16, 15, 16 movies long. Chomper was always the best in the second episode. The second movie was the best movie. <laughs> right. Um, but what what, what are you saying much. that uh, the babies, did they remind you of Chomper? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, they 100% reminded me of Chopper because they were so cute and their heads are so big and they're like tiny, like, little, yeah. little big headed little baby T Rexes. I really, I enjoyed watching them and I liked that. that I thought that they were absolutely fucking adorable. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, we finally get to see them. Of course, they don't have names because they're too young. We don't know anything about them yet. But um, time to wrap up a fun middle episode of this ongoing arc, which I was surprised it continued on to a third episode. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised that the arc continued. This, this arc is, because uh, guess what? We're still on the Colosseus. Yep. Why would you say the name before I get to say episode nine? The, the Colosseus. Part, part three. Oh, dang it. I was trying to appeal <laughs> to you this time. Uh. Um. Once again, we get some nice gulls for scale as we see the Colosseus is continuing to sail down the river. Or the fucking ocean, I assume. I mean, uh, ocean, th- river, it's the same thing to a Colosseus. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The only river in the forest is uh, the river. That's from all my Doctor Who fans out there. They're going to be like, you know, screaming their heads off at that little reference. How dare um, you? Th- <laughs> anyway. Watch it. It's a good show. It is. It is a very good show. Anyway. Um, uh Fang is chained down completely. We see that the babies are crying and they also have little head, like little neck shackles on them as well. Um, all of the crew, the characters we know uh, are all staring as like, we see that they are chained down and they are like in there. Are they in shackles, right? Like oh, Fang and, oh, and Mira. Yeah. And they're all in like, we're talking about the shackles where they can't really do much. Yeah. Uh, Kamau has a gigantic executioner's ax or spear. No, it's an executioner's um, ax. Yeah. Uh, we see that he is hesitant to kill them because he sees that they are in a, they are just trying to save themselves like everybody else has. Uh, as he hesitates, we see a flashback of Kamau back in his village. Uh, we see he has his kid and they're kind of just free and happy. 
he like his daughter's chasing a spider around because she's freaked out by it. But he stops her and he kind of lets the spider out of the house, showing that he is like the most peaceful person in the planet before all the shit went down with him. Yep, he is a very uh, gentle giant. Yeah, we see this uh, non-specific. Afro- I think there is a specific, like, but given his name, some like specific dialect that this village could be the, like reference to. But it's some African village. We're not really sure what, and they are suddenly attacked by the Colossiuses people. They surrender because they do not want to be, you know, they don't want to hurt anybody. But they are killed by the Egyptian invaders of Queen Ima. Uh, Kamau has no choice but to defend himself, so he starts completely, you know, destroying these guards with ease because he is that strong. Uh, but the queen is just too quick for him, and he's unable to attack her. As she kind of leaps over him and grabs his daughter, and this causes him to immediately surrender. Yep, and then of course, you know, um, he he he, he like he, he just he just boat, cut right? yeah he cuts back, oh, yeah. and it's just like he's like you know you could see the turmoil, so. He uh he lifts it up again like it lifts up the axe and then he actually lowers it like lowers it and actually cuts um I he cuts the chains. Mhm. And yeah, he cuts the chains and then he flings the axe towards Ima who, you know, ducks it to try to dodge but she gets she loses the two baby T-Rexes. And she kind of like and like so spear goes after her as they escape. The queen tries to get the daughter, but Kamau trips her, and he just like they're, they're fucking going at it. It's really fucking cool. Mm-hmm. And then like throughout, he uses the gra- he like he stomps on the grate and it like flips up and she kind of like falls back and able to grab the daughter and he grabs his daughter in like a cool yeah. And I mean thing. you know through all this you know uh, Fang gets her, uh, her chains cut, Mira gets freed as well, and so like there's this whole big fight going on and where like. Just everyone's fighting. Mira's like, you know, getting some, uh, getting some shots in with the bow. Um, yeah, Spear is killing uh, tons and tons of the crew along with Fang. It's very, very cool. Uh, but Ima does get to a catapult and she begins to aim it at Fang. And then uh, the babies. Oh yeah, they say as they're killing the babies, do get their first kill. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like it because, because they... they're like, you know, like babies are like, huh. What this guy's hands shaking like he's still alive, and then they just fucking brutally devour him. Yeah, I was gonna say, have you seen uh, Lost World? Yeah, the second yeah, it's, the, it's the little uh, what yeah, are they you remember the tiny ones? Not the no, no, no not the Comic Nathan. No, I'm talking about the actual baby T Rex in the movie. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The entire movie, it's like a defense. It's like a hurt little thing that they're, like they're trying to help the entire movie because it's such it's so hurt. It's just like crying and giving them away and being in trouble. And, like, it doesn't hurt anybody in the entire movie, but then at the final end, the villain is, like, completely, you know, immobile. And the baby just, like, jumps and, like, kills the villain yeah. <laughs> in a really brutal way. And the mom's just, like, standing over so proud. I'm <laughs> just proud like, yeah, that's what Fang was like. <laughs> oh, he did it. He killed that guy. Uh, yeah, as the as Ima's aiming the giant catapult at Spear, we see, or at uh, Fang, Spear kind of jumps over and then kicks the thing out of the way, stopping her from hurting her. Uh, Kamau and his daughter start going under the deck, down and down. They, they take a moment to try to, like, say, like, oh, thank God I finally got you. They kind of, like... You know, have you a know, good they, uh, father, like, father-daughter um, moment. And, you know, as yeah, he's getting ready to, like, you know, hey, we can make our escape, his daughter's like, hey, no, this way. Yeah. She leads him to the row slaves, which we see are all of their people are being oh, forced to row the car. All slaves. these massive, giant people... Yeah. Uh, we see that the queen is still fairly evenly matched with Spear. Um, and she does even manage to like cut his hands and stop him from being able to use his either swords or weapons or anything like that. Uh, we see as they're like fighting in the giant sprawl, one of the babies is hit with an arrow. And of course, this just freaks Fang out and she just goes on a super killing spree, just like annihilating everybody. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's very cool. And then, of course, you know, um, we go back down... Uh, back down where we see uh, you know K- uh, Kamau like sees everyone and he knows what to do but we see uh, guards are just like oh no stop him and then so Kama- uh, Kamau starts fighting and um, as as all of this uh, as, as Kamau is fighting so the slaves like one slave stops rowing. Overseer whips him and all he does is he just stands up and grabs the whip 
Like, it's just like, uh uh-uh, we're not doing this. And then the other slaves finally start standing up for themselves. And it's just, (laughs) no pun intended, it is just a massive brawl in in the bottom. Yeah, it's a very cool thing. Uh, above, Spear and Mira grabbed the babies and leaped off of their ship, and Vang just like gave follow after, like right, right after them to try to get off this boat. Uh, we see them kind of swimming around for a bit. Like this happened before the um, uh, the under the like the rowing uh, mutiny, because like they're swimming around and they see the oars going up and down and like about to like crush them because they're so huge. But just as that, that's when um, Kamau and all the other uh, former row slaves are finally freed and we see that they actually, you know, start the revolt and they stop the paddles right before they hits them. So Mira, Spear, Vang and the babies swim to a mini boat and Spear just like, of course, jumps on, kills everybody very easily. And all the like slaves on the mini boat <laughs> escape and just jump into the water. <laughs> it's very funny. Oh, I love, I love this next part though. This was so, so fucking satisfying because we see Queen <laughs> Ima just looking like, what the hell is going on? She starts like doing a battle cry and starts fighting some of the giants as well. But then you see a uh, Kamo just like standing there, like looking down on her. So she starts trying to like attack. He just like simply just like disarms her e- like easily. Then she starts like you doing a like, hand to hand combat, and he just grabs yeah, her, to. literally has her picked up arm and leg i honestly thought it was going to go one direction but it didn't go in the direction i thought because he just tosses her overboard and (laughs) and, and you're you're like okay cool she's gonna hit the water so we see like fang you see fang spear and mira just in the uh small boat just relaxing calming down all of a sudden through the ceiling bam floor there's queen ima yeah, completely smashed like in a pile, just completely like twitching. I'm just sitting here like, destroyed. oh, oh, that's where they went with that. <laughs> and, uh, you see, yeah, I'm very. Funny. You see, Spear like look up, and you see Kamau like with a smile on his face leans down, picks up daughter. Spear just like gives him that yeah. one look where he just nods and is just like, "Yeah, we cool." Yeah, <laughs> congratulations, we both did it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we cut to nighttime as Fang plays with her new kids. She's finally reunited with them and everything's awesome. And then we see Mira and Spear kind of looking at the moon as they sail towards who knows. Uh, Kamau, we see with his daughter once again, as she gives him some water and they kind of just like look over to the shore of the boat. But then in the distance, they see the fire giant just walking across the top of the water. Yep. Towards somewhere. And again, towards where the direction that Spear and uh, Miro. Were. And like I said before, the water quenching the flame, please. Yeah, and he's literally walking on top of the water. Yeah, he's literally, he's <laughs> literally Jesusing this. Yeah, and that is the end of the episode and the end of the Colossus. Yep, we finally, the, the arc is finished. It was a three parter and it continued with the story rather than being its own thing. While being yeah. its own thing at the same time. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, firstly, before we actually get into the actual plot plot, uh, do you think Ima got off too easily? Or do you think she shouldn't have been killed that early? <laughs> um, Honestly, I think with uh, be- because it, it was like the first season, right? They, they had 10 episodes each, right? Yeah. We're on episode 9. So honestly, I knew they had to wrap it up th- like this episode. But honestly, I will agree with you that she got off easy because, like I said, when he had her picked up over one uh, one hand grabbing the entire leg, the other grabbing the entire arm, I didn't expect to be her to be thrown over and then just her smashed to death. I literally thought she was going to get ripped in half. Yeah, that would have been a crazy end. Honestly, I was thinking though, like, um, like I mentioned in uh, Lost World, I thought they were gonna throw her through the boat and then the baby. I almost had like a um, Mandela effect, fucking, or like the um, Korra fight with Un- with a uh, Unalak, fucking, or not Unalak, whatever her her uncle was. Like, I I thought like I thought that the babies attacked her for their first like kill, just like in Lost World where they like attack the. I, I was like, oh yeah, of course, like she gets thrown through there and then the babies attack her, and that's how the, that's how her death Matt. would be because she you know did all that shit to them. 
What yeah. the fuck are you talking about? There was no season where Korra went to the North Pole to fight her uncle. That didn't exist. <laughs> yeah, and her uncle uh, broke the beam in half or whatever the fuck we all thought happened. Oh, oh, you mean that nerd who called up everyone who was like, hey, can I be in this too? And everyone said no, and then so he just hung up? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a funny um, episode. For any of you, God, for any, for any of you listening that have that. no idea what we're talking about, go go, go watch our Legend of Korra uh, series. Yeah, go listen to the entire series. It's very it, funny. It, it's great. We, um, we've got friend of the podcast, Chris. We've got Ed from Movie Garbage on there. It's a fun time. Yeah, but like I, I thought that the, the baby T-Rexes attacked her not, after she was thrown through the boat, and that would have been like a more satisfying end for her, I think. Honestly, I was, I, I was not as satisfied as I could be, but that was a fitting end for a queen like her. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll say that... Um, I also wanted to talk about the arc, the entire Colosseus arc as a whole. What did you think of it as like the first actual ongoing plot arc besides like I guess the the Viking revenge? Thing? Can I can I be <laughs> honest with you? Yeah. Fucking refreshing. Like holy really? like like holy crap. Like I'm so used to season 1 where it was like monster of the week esque kind of thing with an yeah. arc that and I air quote arc heavily with the uh the the, the monkey tribe like the 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 eight, oh, the yeah, eight yeah, men, yeah, yeah. um, like I guess yeah, that was men, yeah. technically an arc because it had more than one episode. But then there was the Vikings, you know. And it's like okay, three episodes, that's cool, you know. But then Charles Darwin got in the way, and then you know, <laughs> yeah. and then and then I'm like, oh, they're gonna continue with the Vikings, you know. That's gonna be the main focus, which makes sense, okay. But then they completely went on a different tangent with the whole Egyptian thing and with Queen Ema, and mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I may not be a fan of that kind of archetype of villain. Yes, I don't have the same niche as you do when it comes to women. Um, <laughs> but I do see where they're going, and I do like this. And then seeing up to that point, and of course they reminded you, hey, the Viking the Viking chief is still a thing. But let's focus on this right now kind of thing. They did it so well, and honestly, it was a breath of fresh air to see something that was not Viking related. I know. I know. Shun the bad thoughts over here, but we already had, like, the, the climax of the whole Viking thing. You know, with the Red Mist. So, you know, th- yeah. th- that was good. That was done. Seeing this arc, I'm like, this is awesome. This is great. And... It put, you know, it put the whole world perspective thing because we now had Egyptian in the mix. Yeah, I was going to say the first time I watched this, like on my own, when I like binge watched the show for the first time, I hated this entire arc. Really? (laughs) I absolutely hated it. Yeah, I was upset with most of the season so far because it was so like exclusively human focused as opposed to my dinosaur and prehistoric monster loving, you know, nerd brain was like, oh, I like when they're like fighting, you know, random ape men and random dinosaurs and random fucking night slashers and fucking all kinds of weird shit, zombie uh, Argentinosaurs. And, like, I was just like, ugh, what the fuck, more human shit? This sucks. I hate this human shit. And then, like, all the weird empires. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. When time is it taking place, I really, I hated, hated this arc the first literally, time. Literally, literally, like, I just imagine you, I, Matt, I imagine you sitting here yeah. watching all of this being like, what year is it? <laughs> Future. Just, like, in the Squidward position. No, it's like... I I was just like so uh, I I did not like season two like I, I guess we'll get to it at the end of the season when we rank, rank the whole thing as a, as a whole but like yeah I was very upset with this arc I was so shocked by how long it was taking I was just like ugh how, how are we still here how are we still doing this like the, the shit with the fucking queen or whatever who cares um like I, I legit Queen Emma was a whatever villain to me I really didn't like you know care either way with her or whatever the first time but like. This time, watching it now and having, you know, doing the podcast, overanalyzing everything, uh, I did appreciate it a lot more. I did like the ongoing plot compared to the first season. Like like I said, uh, actually watching Spear and Fang go on a new kind of adventure and, like, actually, you know, be restrained in what they can do for this time period was very interesting. And like I said, I liked it a lot more this time than I originally did. So I, I'm glad I enjoyed myself more. But, yeah, I, I really hated this whole arc the first time well, I watched hold, it. <laughs> well, holy crap. You looked at your girlfriend and said, nah, fam, I'm good. But then you, like, realized, oh, shit, I might be into this. Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. But I, un- I understand. I mean, we'll get to it when we get to the uh, the series wrap-up. But, um, but mm-hmm. yeah, I-, I can see your points on that. But yeah, yeah. Uh, any any other, like, uh, 
question like qu- topic questions or anything no just like i thought that the Colosseus was very interesting and it's you know I, i'm very I, I was i'm i'm curious about the future but like we'll get to this last episode and then we'll talk about the show as a whole because i have a lot more sounds good let's not keep them waiting because we are on literally the season and currently series finale yeah episode 12 so 10 to really <laughs> What the hell's wrong with you? I'm an idiot. That's fine. Um, episode 10. <laughs> episode 10. 10 echoes. E- echoes of eternity. of eternity. Don't ask me why I said 12. My brain did not function correctly there. Look, <laughs> I'm excited because of the end. Anyway, we start off. I was going to say your brain was maybe replaced by the Neanderthal, like when we see as a Neanderthal hand puts a, <laughs> puts a handprint on a cave wall, blows some dust to make a print. Uh, as we zoom out and we see Spear's dad, who looks even more primal than his son does. He looks even more like prehistoric caveman. Like no, like and for those for those of you uh, you know listening in on this, the first thing I thought of when I saw Spear's dad was he has red glowing eyes and he looks more ape like. So I thought he was like one of those weird like culty ape men. Oh, really? It had similarities, at least. I'm not saying it was the exact same. It just reminded me of them. But yeah. anyway, we yeah, see we just, see, you know, um... Spear as a kid hanging out with his dad. And, you know, they're having fun times. All of a sudden, some uh, Smilodons appear. Yeah, I'm glad you got it right. <laughs> yeah, it, trust me, it took me a hell of a long time. I was really I ready to correct you. But I'm like, no, it's Smilodons. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, Smilodon, literally, yeah. Uh, as Chris said, Smiley Boys. Yeah, Smiley Boys. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, uh, 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 it's like a small pause in the podcast. Did you watch the show solo or did Chris finish it with you? Wait, what? Oh, 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 oh. Did Chris oh, finish the show? Oh, he was yeah, I, 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 all of season two I watched solo. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We got to get Chris's thoughts next time we cover a show. But, um, but yeah, we do see, he called them Smiley Boys. Uh, we see one bite the dead very, like, in a really hard place. Uh, Spear stabs it, trying to protect his father. As the dad continues to take them down, but he is overtaken eventually by the huge number of smiles. It's literally ripping at him from like all angles. Uh, as he is dying, Spear takes out the remaining one. Like he does a really cool thing where he jumps on him. He does the whole like you know fall on the spear thing. He takes out a couple more of them as they kind of chase him off a rock. Eventually, he does manage to kill them and he saves the village. Yeah. The remaining villagers then give him the father's necklace, I assume making him the chief of the village. Yep. Uh, like, cause I, I'm guessing it's like, you know, passing down trinket to trink, uh, trinket from person to person. And so it's like at the ripe yeah. old age of like, I don't know, I, in my notes I have at the ripe old age of 10, he is the chief. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, meanwhile, we, uh, we cut back to... Um, just, Spear awakes and he sees Mira pointing to her village in the distance. Well, pointing to land. Yeah, land in the yeah, distance. Yeah, and she's expired. Uh, as they get, yep, yep. Yeah, as they get to land, she starts crying as Spear joins her to see what's going on. Uh, Fang, one of Fang's little babies, <laughs> tries to run out and jumps in the water, but she kind of just stops him from being like a little goofus. Um, we finally get Miro's flashback to the night that her and her friends were uh, taken as slaves. We see that she is out with uh, some kind of boyfriend of hers or and like they're with two other friends as they're kind of on the shore. We also see that she is really tall for her people. Yeah, oh yeah, she's, she um, is extremely tall for her people. We see her in like an African tribal outfit and... I, I and trust me on this one. This is actually not as like this is actually as crazy as it sounds. And we actually see her with hair, like she. Yeah, yeah she has a little afro. Yeah, and um, we see her. Like I guess they're kind of like on a double date kind of thing. Yeah, I think it's just like young kids in the village going to like their makeout spot to hang out. Yeah, right. And then of course, as all of this, you know, it's just like oh, you know, this is. Ha 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 ha, chase me, chase me kind of thing. We hear a scream and we see some Viking slavers there. Yeah, we see the Vikings coming on shore. We see the big old scorpion logo on the sail as they kill the two friends and they approach Mira and them. And as they are approaching, we see the boyfriend try to defend her, but he is also killed. Yep. And then, of course, Mira like see... stands up to herself for herself. And instead of killing her outright, Viking just choke grabs her and then the next scene was like actually it doesn't show much but it's really fucking visceral because we actually see 
on the boat, her with her shaved head getting branded. Yeah, we actually see what happened to her more specifically as we see her on the boat. And then we see at one point she sees one of the axes is kind of left discarded. Um, she uses it to break the chain and escape. Yep, and of course, Viking not happy about this. And uh, she's and, just yeah, not very she, happy. This is when she met Fang during her journey. Yeah, yeah, she's. I mean, she's happy to be like on land and free, but she's also not happy because painful memories, they do that. So, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. as they're walking through this plateau uh, kind of area, they see a cave. So they're just like, okay, you know what? We're gonna go and we're gonna sleep. We're gonna sleep in this cave. So you know, Fang with her babies. You know, they're sleeping. Um, Spear like wakes up in the night and looks out, and we see Mira doing her worship to the moon, her prayer thing. And yeah, in yeah. a very endearing moment, Spear goes over and actually goes through the motions with her, and Mira is very happy about this. Yeah, it's very cool. We see the babies chasing camels and stuff. It's very just cute. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, in this area, there's camels. Yeah. Uh, In the morning, Fang gives Spear, uh, like, she, like, just, like, goes out to try to look for some food as she leaves the babies and Spear in the cave. And then we see that she finds a human bathing and freaks out. (laughs) Yeah, and the the human lady, like, freaks out where, um, as she's screaming, Mira and Spear rush over like really quickly, and you know Mira, ca- Mira and Spear calm down Fang, and all of a sudden the lady who's in the water looks over and says, "Mira," and then um, from yeah. the flashback we actually learn that her friend was named Amara, and we find out that this is Amara. Yeah, we actually find out she survived. Um, she's very very happy to be me reunited with the people she knows. Uh, and as everyone's freaking out, she kind of, uh, Mira goes out of her way to make sure everyone's calm as they return to their beautiful mountain. We see like a beautiful mountain village as they return. Oh yeah. It's like built into the And of course, you know, everyone in the village are like, holy shit, a big, a a big hairy man and some T-Rexes. And Mira's like, yeah, guys, 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 they're cool. They're with me. Yeah. They're calm. Everybody calm down. Um, it's very cool seeing like them actually approach, and then we see like somebody swinging a. I, I thought those are called bull roars, and I was saying this is the same thing that that weird guy in the um, portal episode of Castlevania was swinging around. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, kind of, like oh yeah, very weird. Um, and then have, spear yep. each and watches from the like from the show, like they're all like watching. Uh, the next night, as they're celebrating, Spears eating and like seeing this weird, crazy moon and sun dance, which I'm assuming is just their like religion being like displayed on like what their beliefs. And stuff right, it's like are, you know, it's like a, it's right. like a classical like a uh, like tribal dance, and like when you see the character portraying the moon, a lot of people like bow down, except for Spear, who's just like, "What the fuck is going on?" Yeah, I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> and then, of course, at, during the performance, he's just, just like, you know what? I'm just gonna... And he just leaves. And, of course, Mira's... Yeah, he's very, he's a little bit uncomfortable because this is a weird, civilized world, and he's all, you know, crazy. <laughs> well, you mean uncivilized, <laughs> but... um, And, of yeah. course, Mira notices this, and, you know, try. It, it's funny because, you know, he's beside uh, Fang, just, like, hunched down, like, hugging legs. Mira's like, like hey, hey, come over here. Look! You get a home with a bed and everything. Yeah. And Spear immediately just goes over to the corner, not on the not on the uh, bed, and just does the exact same thing. And then, of course, you know, yeah. when you have pets, um, Fang and the babies just barrel on in, breaking the doorway. <laughs> they break the entire wall down and just go to the and Mira's <laughs> And Mira's just like, um, you know what? I'm cool with this. And leaves. Um, yeah. But then as that as that happens, as uh, Mira leaves, Spear looks at a blank wall and is just like, you know what? I know what I'm going to do. The next morning, um, Mira enters uh, the house that she gave Spear, who's asleep, and she actually gets to see um, the mural of like everything that's gone on in his life. Yeah, all the whole journey from the beginning of the series to this point. And very, like, at the very cool end of it is just Spear standing alone. Yeah, he still feels bad. Um, as Spear awakes and goes out to the town, we see that people are still terrified of Fang to some extent. Um, and they're kind of like, you know, still not feeling completely welcome in the village. Uh, as they stare into the distance, they see a huge pillar of smoke approaching. 
Spear and Fang go off to check what the hell it is, and they see it's the giant Viking chief. Yep, it is the it is the giant uh, fire chieftain, and we get a very very awesome fight scene where you know yeah we see him yep. make a gigantic another gigantic fire halberd, and he shouts Vida! and then like starts like showing his power. To the point where Spear and Fang have to, like, retreat upwards towards a mountain. Like, up a mountain. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, getting chased and everything where they get cornered. He turned into a snake at oh, one yeah, point. Oh, yeah, he, he, he climbing up the mountain, up the mountain he turns the into a giant snake, which means, you know, shape-shifting capabilities. Um, yeah. And, of course, all of this is, like, all of this is happening. Uh, Mira actually sees what's going on. It's like, oh, shit, you know, kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Once he turns human, he starts blasting Fang with fire, and then Spear kind of just gets in the way to try to defend her. Um, undeterred, of course, because Spear is the baddest-ass motherfucker of all time, we see that he leaps onto the chief, completely disregarding the flames, like, burning him to a crisp as he is fighting. Uh, he knocks him off of the huge cliff, and as they are falling down, we see him just absolutely pummeling the shit out of this guy. And he's like biting him and just completely just like and you literally you know, caught on fire, things. mind you, this entire time yeah. until finally they hit the ground. Um, and of course, you know, um, spear is like spear is absolutely fatally burned, and, and yeah, the, the, like Viking burned chief, the Viking chief like is just like hard. laying there, and we we get a scene where Mira runs over and tries to pat out the fire, and yeah, we all before that we see the chief say. Vidar, one last time, and then we see a massive fiery hand come out of the ground, grab him. He returns entirely to a human form and is dragged underground. All right, and then, and, and then the whole like slapping the yeah, fire Mira. off. Um, yeah, Mira comes to try to help, and Fang roars in utter depression and sorrow. And then, of um, course, we see back to the, back, yeah, yeah sees, back to the village where we see Spear yeah. is covered in leaves incredibly burnt yeah like completely like face like melted burned uh we see the villagers are unable to help despite all their best efforts um fang just kind of like roars and screams out of sadness and then leaves we see her like leaving the village seemingly it's completely out of depression uh spear calls out to mira again one last time as she looks over at his painting and looks back at him, kind of like with a smile, and then she lays with him, even though he is incredibly deadly burnt. Uh, yeah, that must have. As last thing we see, it's like she kind of like gets on top of him, and uh, she lays with him. Yep. Then we cut to years we get later. A flash forward. Yep. Where we see we Fang, see the two baby Rexes. Yeah, and the two baby Rexes who are the, not yeah. babies anymore. Yeah, they are fully grown. And on one of them, and then we, see... we see a girl. <laughs> Yeah, we see a girl, vaguely, possibly Neanderthal-esque girl, riding on top of one of them with a spear, and we also see Mira back with her hair as they roar in triumph, and that is the end of Primal for now. Yep, because they've already announced the season three already, but... Yeah, but that was also like years ago, and nothing's, nothing's been heard of since, I don't think, so in, I'm, I'm patiently waiting. In the meantime, this was yeah. indeed the end of the show. Holy mm -hmm. crap. Yeah, absolutely fantastic show. Uh, once again, beautiful Gennady Tartakovsky storytelling with barely any dialogue. Uh, a, a beautiful story with beautiful arts and crazy awesome action and just like great storytelling, great villains. I, I absolutely fucking love this show to death. And I, I would I would put it very high in the ranking of all the shows we've covered so far, personally. But this is my pick, so what do you think, Ben? Um, honestly... I was originally hesitant to watch this show because I didn't mm -hmm. know how I would feel about it. Th and then you looked at me and said, hey, we're watching this. And I looked at you and I said, well, Matt said we're watching it, which means it's for the podcast, which means I have to watch it. And <laughs> but like I've done with all the other shows he had me start watching, I went in just like, you know what? Obviously, there's a going trend here. And then I started watching it, and I actually enjoyed what was going on, kind of thing. And, good, on, yeah, and throughout the entirety, it's like, yes, it is a fantastic show. I mean, absolutely friggin' fantastic show. And 
I was happy, <laughs> which when Matt told me that there is a season three announced and they're working on it, which was like last year. Um, but <laughs> they, uh, I actually was really happy to hear that because it is a really good show. And at first I thought this was the end, you know, it's like, oh, this is how the story ends. I'm okay with this because it deserves to have like a he- an ending. Is it slightly open-ended? Maybe. But it's just like, hey, you know what? This is how the story ends. Story's done. They had a kid. Lineage continues. And that's like season three. And yeah. I'm like, season three? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So, Matt. Out of nowhere, but very funny. I have an idea as to what you're going to go with. So I'm going to beat you to the punch on one concept. Ah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so with every series, with every uh, series that we watch, there's usually like, yeah, sure, we can do the ranking thing, but I'm going to start with this one. My favorite part to my my favorite part to, and my least favorite part of this entire show. So my favorite part, I, I've said this in many of the episodes, probably in every episode that we recorded for this. I love the fact that this is a story where if nobody said a single word at all, you would still understand the concept of the story and you could still see the progression of everyone. It's like one of those rare occasions where you don't need words in order to tell a story. This story just paints itself kind of thing. And it's kind of refreshing (laughs) to see that because you rarely do anymore. Now, what I didn't like, and Matt, you might agree with me in some aspect. Um, after season one, the continuity got muddied. Like the time era, the time frame, the locations. Well, <laughs> are you going with what you're going to say? Because I have a different, have a different response. But yeah, go oh, ahead. That, 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 that's pretty much it. If you want to say something. Oh, I was going to say, like, I mentioned before uh, as well that, like, Hey man, uh, just like the whole um, like Cleopatra was closer to the PS5 than the fucking pyramids being built. Um, the exact same thing can be said for Tyrannosaurus Rex existed closer to me and you talking right now than it did to when Stegosaurus or any of the other early dinosaurs like Dimorphodon or anything like any of those existed. So there was already like <laughs> wildly no continuity from the very beginning with the, things like mammoths and um, you know, Homo erectus and all the other various like eight people that were around along with the dinosaurs, and not to mention that there was literally magic. <laughs> well, and also the, things like the well, Argentinosaur the existing in the same realm as things like uh, other dinosaurs that were not in America. See, or now, South now, America now, here's even. the thing. Here's the thing. So. <laughs> here's the thing. I'm willing to give a bunch of that a pass, which is why I didn't. Which is why I said after season one, because let's face it. When it comes to any dinosaur show or animation, they always mix the dinosaurs together, even if they're in different time eras. And I'm also going to give it a pass because ancient tribes did rely on magic of some sort or what they believed was magic to actually do <laughs> things. So, and, and, you know, it was wibbly wobbly fiction fantasy. So I'm like, I'll give the magic a pass. But like going from yeah, but also, going, um, but, but I will agree with you on one thing. We you had Neanderthal, aka you know Spear, and then you had like Homo erectus, and then you had uh, some of the other ones, like some of the pre pre Pithecus and all those other weird yeah, yeah, yeah. men. Yeah, and you know that was like okay, that's a weird flex, but all right. And then we get we go from Neanderthal to a Homo sapien. We go from dinosaur era to Vikings. <laughs> yeah, before that, Celts even. Uh, well, I, I I I will put them in the same uh, boat. Yeah, but yeah it's just like uh, what? And then and then <laughs> and then, let's be honest. And there you have it. That episode. Yeah, yeah. That episode. Of course. But then, even if you want to like step back even more, like uh, um, you can just look at it like big concept, silly, you know, uh, co- a TV show nerd thing, and just say like, well, <laughs> the same continuity as fucking Dexter's Lab, which has space aliens and all kinds of goofy shit, superheroes, and then, um, like I said, like you can do, that's that's technically possibly the same world as shit like Powerpuff Girls or Samurai Jack, 
and like a bunch of other things that like have vague crossover gags that could mean like actual continuity and like those worlds are even more fucked up and weird than this one is so well i mean so i think i'd give it a pass on yeah that. I, I mean i guess i see your point even though cartoon network did, did make the cartoon network verse yeah but yeah, yeah. Either way, so what was multiverse coming back soon? <laughs> what was your favorite and least favorite of the series? Of the series as a whole, obviously, like I said, like I can't stop shutting up about. I'm a huge mark for dinosaur action, so I'll say overall this season, I put slightly. I I don't think I enjoyed it as much as season one, even though I did. Like I said, uh, immensely enjoyed a lot more on the second watch. I will say that uh, the first season was like, uh, in my opinion, infinitely, infinitely better. I thought it was way, way, way more fun and like crazy. And like, I love the, the dinosaur action was much more fun. The ongoing human puck is like, yeah, like human villains over and over again, human, you know, plots and human, like, you know, stuff was not that crazy and interesting to me. But, um, I think that it was like, it was still a very enjoyable season. And that, like I said, as a show as a whole, I fucking love this show to death. It's oh, yeah, fantastic. absolutely. This show is good. And uh, I guess you and I are definitely opposites in some point because don't get me wrong. Season one was fantastic and it set everything up. Mm -hmm. I actually did like uh, season two a little better. And I say a little better in like actuality, like only by a little bit. Um, because, yeah, sense, because yeah. I mean, the season one was good. It set up everything. It set up our characters, but season two, like fleshed the story out a little bit more and it had Vikings. Mm. So fuck you. Yeah. Of course. No, 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 no. <laughs> but in all seriousness, take out the Viking part. And I, and that's where my, that's where my stance stands. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm glad we got to cover a really fun show. Um, we'll get to what's in the future for us. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, like I said. But uh, we can get to a little bit of plugs, and then we can get to what's up next for us. All right, well, my shameless plugs are... I don't have any shameless plugs. But you, uh -huh. on the other hand, Matt, you have plenty to go around, yeah, yeah, so yeah. lay it on. <laughs> All right, Matthew Lewis Podcast. Check it out. Patreon, YouTube, uh, Twitter, freaking uh, Instagram. Matthew Lewis Podcast everywhere. Uh, donate and fucking follow the show. Uh, also, of course, there is the specific shows on Matthew Lewis Podcasts. The Forgotten Minotaur King book is still available on Amazon, along with the podcast for free. Um, you can also find my other podcast, Movie Garbage, on there as well. Old episodes of Action Toon Bros is always welcome. Uh, maybe some future projects, maybe some streaming in the future, who knows. But uh, right now, I just want to keep it simple like that. And I'll say that I'm looking forward to getting some more episodes. Hopefully more episodes. Probably still going to be as sparse as they currently are until we get more shit in the bag. But um, I enjoyed I still fucking love podcasting, even though it's getting summer and it's getting hotter and more, you know, annoying to sit in the room talking this long. But still. I mean, hey, you got to do what you we'll got to do, right? Hell yeah. I love this. It's one of my favorite hobbies. Trust me. Absolutely. Uh, okay. So. Okay. Wrapping up plugs. Yeah, yeah. So, now, um, you said there were two options that you did not choose. I was going to say, well, now there's three options. Um, I'll say the one that was closest to getting picked. Wait, here, here, here. Better, better, better idea, the, better idea. Start with the yeah. one that isn't even close and work your way up. All right. Uh, first, well, we still may do it, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the first option I was going to do was going to be X-Men TAS. Oh, like the original. That was the one. Oh, yeah. The original 1992 series that goes into the new uh, 1997 one. Okay, okay. Um, I was going to do that. That was that was honestly going to be my top pick, but I rechecked the episode count and our, with our new thing of doing probably slightly less episodes to cover, uh, that would have taken like fucking 20 episodes to do because oh, <laughs> okay. it is like 76 episodes long. Yeah, yeah, true, true. <laughs> and I don't know. I, would, I don't know if I wanted to be stuck in a series that long. Um, the second one, uh, Outward, was going to be Invincible um, because it's fucking great. We'd only be able to cover probably maybe two episodes, and that would probably still keep us at like a regular length because each episode is like 45 minutes to an hour long, but it's a fucking great show. And we will probably cover that eventually because I do want to do a short series, but that's still ongoing, so that's also in the bag. Uh, now the number one closest that I was going to do and like until like just recently decided, you know what, I'm going to keep that in the bag for a little bit longer as well 
was the spiritual successor to Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, Netflix's The Dragon Prince. Oh, ooh, okay, you know, okay. I, that's, where, that's what they, yeah, they, I don't know if you knew that, but the showrunners from Avatar made that show after they like left. If everything. that was said, I actually may have forgotten that. Okay, yeah, that's like that's literally the entire team. And even like uh, Jack the Son of Sokka's voice actor is the main character in that show. And uh, I'll say spoilers, I watched that whole thing and it was, it definitely feels like The Last Airbender. Okay, okay. <laughs> but now. Yeah, but that, was, but that was my other thing. But the, that was my mind change like, like on the course of this podcast. But. All right, here we go. The show that I decided to do uh-huh. is, I don't know if it's going to be like a little bit of a letdown, but may, or maybe a, a finally a, br- a breath of relief for fans of our Come show. On. I think it's time me and you finally went back and finished off Young I Justice. knew you were going to say that. I <laughs> knew you were going to. With the build up, I'm like, he's going to say season four of Young Justice because we have yet to still freaking cover that. But hey, Matt, you want to know what's the good part about yeah. it is? Yeah. You, you, on the other hand, like, like, on the other hand, why did I say on the other hand? You were the one who did every single Young Justice episode. Every single season of Young Justice that we covered, it was you who suggested it, as it should be. <laughs> I'm glad. Oh. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's a much shorter, it's only 26 episodes, which is still pretty significant. And I'm, I'm technically going to have to go back on my, um, my new pitch of shorter episodes, because that, in case you don't know, uh, people who've watched the show or not, the fifth or fourth season is like divided into arcs and each arc is about like four episodes exactly yeah something like that and so we're probably going to be doing for right about going to continue our four episode thing i mean i like said recently that i would want to cut down on the episode count because like i said i changed my mind recently over the course of this podcast to do this to do this season but um but yeah each episode each arc is literally like four episodes in a row of a story and then it completely shifts like what group they follow and everything like that so that's probably how we're going to cover it. And since, like I said, it's only 26 episodes, so we should be able to cover that like proportionally way more quicker than anything else. Uh, but yeah, we are going to, I'm going to get through that series because I want to, and I fucking, you know, I want to nerd out about DC shit. Oh my God. Yeah, I'll, I'll dude, probably honestly, also... honestly, it's been so long. I was like, when we were doing our series and everything like that, all our different series, series I was saying to myself, yeah. you know what Matt hasn't done? Because he didn't really do it as much at, in Spawn. I haven't heard him nerd out about anything, particularly of the DC variety. Oh, yeah. I'm very, very hyped. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Outstanding. Yeah. yeah, I'm very much looking forward because also, like, um, I don't, did you watch season four yet? Dude, I dude, I watched it when it was newer. Hell, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, we're going to have a lot to talk about. It's going to be very, very fun. And then after that, maybe we'll cover one of the other series I mentioned or something completely different just because I like to keep everyone on their toes. Absolutely. But, um... Yep, but that is going to be it for Action Tune Bros. Make sure if you have HBO Max or some other way of watching shows, uh, you make sure you pick that shit up because we are still covering Young Justice. Absolutely. Now from the Action Tune Bros to you. Keep it Keep sleazy. It sleazy. Kubira's Gambit. I'm going to cut that out this time. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, yeah, Tony Twist. <laughs>